right, the stats, we are going to finish, finish, excuse me, 2.2a notes. We're going to finish with this last definition of the standard normal distribution. So we know that a normal distribution is a bell-shaped curve that's centered around the mean and has about three standard deviations above and below. The standard normal distribution is a specific type of normal distribution. Specifically, the standard normal distribution is a normal distribution that has a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. So I've got a drawing here of the standard normal curve, mean of zero, standard deviation of one. And the first question, the most important question is, what was the name that we gave something called standardized values. You've seen that before. What were our standardized values? These I'm talking about are z-scores. They were standardized, right? A z-score is equal to the value minus the mean over the standard deviation. A z-score tells us how many standard deviations above or below the mean your observation is. So remember, like, I don't remember if it was Santiago or Keisha, but one of them had a z-score of negative 0.67, I think, or something kind of like that. Um, negative 0, oh, it was 77, whatever. Well, I guess I'll go, I'll give you the right one. So Santiago had a z-score of negative 0.77, meaning he was 0.77 standard deviations below the mean. Every z-score falls into this distribution. And why is that helpful? Well, we kind of know a little bit about our normal curve, right? We know about one standard deviation above and below the mean. That's 68. We know about two standard deviations above and below the mean. That's 95. And we know about three standard deviations above and below the mean. That's going to be the 99.7. But what if I'm not exactly one, two, or three standard deviations above or below the mean? Good news. We can still figure out a lot about that value. So we're going to look at something called the standard normal table, otherwise known as table A. Now, I have this image in your notes, and so we should definitely look at that. But I will also point out this table A is a part of your formula sheet. It's in the back of the formula sheet, and this table is also in the back of your textbook. Back of textbook. So you will be using both of these, either your formula sheet or your textbook for your homework. Um, and let's look at what this table is. Notice the table gives us the area to the left of the z-score. We see that because it's shaded to the left of this value z. So I can look at any z-score, it does not matter what it is, and I can find the area to the left, otherwise known as the proportion of values. So if we look down the left side, that column, and the top row, we see z's, z values. So if I, for example, wanted to identify a z-score of 1.32, we'll say, Hey guys, sorry, I had to pause the video because some other teacher interrupted me, so I kind of lost my train of thought. But I think, because I had written this, um, we were looking, so let's find a z-score of 1.32. First, I do want to mention, if I were to draw that, here's the mean of zero on our standard normal curve, 1, 2, 3. 1.32 would be over 1, so right about here, 1.32. So if I'm curious to find what percentage is below that, I'm going to find 1.3 here, and then 0 0.02, and I'm going to kind of go down and across 90.66%. 90.66% of our data lies below one standard deviation, 1.32 standard deviations above mean. Sorry, that was a really bad way of saying that. Let's do an example. This will be better if we actually try one. So find the proportion of observations from the standard normal distribution that are between negative 0.84 and positive 2.23. Let's start by sketching that out. 
So standard normal curve, that means a mean of zero with three standard deviations above, three standard deviations below. I'm going to add in negative 0.84, so a little less than one, negative 0 0.84, and positive 2.23. So that's one, two, 2.23 is maybe here, 2.23. We want to find the proportion of observations that are between these. So I'm going to shade in between. How can I do this? Well, I'm going to technically do it in two steps. I'm going to start by looking at all of the area to the left of 2.23. Why? Because that's what our table tells us. So I'm going to go up 2.2 .2 and 2.23. So we are at right here, 0.9871. This area right here is 0 0.9871. Then I'm going to look for a moment at negative 0 0.84. And because, again, our table gives us to the left, that's what I'm going to calculate. So 0.84. Uh, so here's a catch, guys. This is great. Notice I only gave you the positive version of this table on this document. So I'm going to pause my video right now, and I want you to grab your formula sheet or find the book, and we'll come back in a moment. All right, I realized I paused it and walked away, but it probably felt like it was two seconds because I just kept recording. But pause this video right now if you haven't already found your uh, formula sheet, and open it up to table A. You will notice table A has two pieces. We've got the positive side over here and the negative. So I'm looking for negative 0 0.84. Negative 0 0.8. Okay, I found negative 0 0.8, and I'm going to go to negative 0 0.84, and I'm seeing 0 0.2005, or 20% of our data is to the left. Well, if I want to find this right here, how am I going to do it? I will take the 98.71% minus this area right here, right? This guy right here, the 20.05. When I do that subtraction, I get 78.66. That's technically percent or 78.66% of our values are between negative 0.84 and positive 2.23. Now, does this make sense? Does this kind of feel good in terms of our problem? Well, first off, 80%-ish is kind of a lot. And that actually is okay because we're almost two full standard deviations below, and below oh, oh my goodness, almost two full standard deviations above, and almost one full standard deviation below. So if we think of two above, two above and below would be the 95%. Well, we're not quite 95% because that would have to be from two below to two above. But we're more than the 68%, which is one above and one below. So we're more than 68%, less than 95%. All right, I feel good about our answer. Let's do one other type of problem, which is the following. In the standard normal distribution, 20% of the observations are above what value? So let's sketch this out. Here's our graph. We want to find a z-score that has 20% of values above it, so that this area right here is 20% but I don't know what that value is. And table A only gives us the area to the left. So what are we gonna do? Well, let's consider what is the area to the left. If there's 20% above, that means there's 80% below. All right, well, let's go back to our table. And now we need to find the value inside this table that's closest to 80%. So I just kind of start looking, and my eye is drawn to, like, okay, I'm right around here, 82.6. That's too high. So I'm going to keep looking, 
and I'm like, oh, okay, 81, that's too high. 80.78, okay, I'm going to get closer. 80.51, that's closer. 80.23, this solution is okay. Honestly, even is this one, 79.95. Either would be sufficient, really, and I'm actually going to go with this lower one because that would round up to 80%. So what z-score is that? Well, I look over point, oops, I didn't mean to cross it out, 0 0.8, and I look up 0.4, so my answer is a z-score of 0 0.84 which we kind of actually saw in the last example. All right, that was all of 2.2a. I want you to try those homework assignments and let me know if you have questions. When we come to class on Tuesday, we're gonna start this section, 2.2b, and it will really like solidify the things that we've been doing with this normal curve, but do work on the 2.2a homework because it will definitely help you see what's going on here. Let me know if you need help and have a great weekend.